Hi, I'm Chris Hilario, host of My Story at Home, and you're about to be fascinated with the story I'm about to tell you. This story is about the Woodworth House, located at 1717 San Pedro Avenue, just a stone throw away from San Antonio College. This mansion has been home to the Women's Club of San Antonio for over 88 years. This storied home has such a distinguished legacy that its nickname is the Jewel of the Texas Golden Age, also known as San Antonio's best kept secret. But today, we're gonna change that so everyone can know about a storied home that enabled a group of distinguished women to achieve numerous significant events to benefit the city of San Antonio, the nation, and the world at large. So come on, let me show you around. This story begins with Mr. David J. Woodworth. He was born in Bonella, Mississippi in 1864. When he was three years old, his family moved to Palestine, Texas, which was located 100 miles southeast of Dallas, Texas. When young David turned 18, he ran away from home with nothing but a 50 cent piece in his pocket. Now it's unknown if he had family problems or he was just a young man with a great sense of Texas adventure. Whatever the case was, he ended up working on an East Texas ranch as a lowly ranch hand with his boss, D.S. Combs, that paid him $20 a month. This working relationship would be very rewarding and a key turning point in David's life as it would ultimately lead to this elegant mansion. This was presented to Mr. Woodward during a secret ceremony once he was knighted as a Freemason. Now, one unsolved mystery is this. Was his mentor D.S. Combs a member of the Freemason secret society? The evidence suggests it's very possible because historical records indicate they stayed friends and were business partners for a very long time. Also, Mr. Woodward's business dealings, business partners, and mannerisms were very consistent with the Freemasons' stated values and purpose. Just as it is today, San Antonio was a boom town filled with a lot of opportunity. At that time, San Antonio was the largest city in Texas, so it was natural that Mr. Woodward would be attracted to it. But on his way to San Antonio, something more attractive caught his attention. As he stopped by San Marcos, Texas, a fine, beautiful lady named Miss Maybach won him over and they married on July 17, 1889. Mr. Woodward, a romantic, had a mansion built as a gift for his wife's birthday. He had a house designed in a style of neoclassic revival, which featured Corinthian columns. The front is a grandiose, impressively designed with four stately Corinthian columns encompassing a semicircle veranda or porch. Corinthian columns were first designed in ancient Greece and flourished in Rome, Italy. What distinguishes Corinthian columns from similar ones is the head. Another exterior feature of the mansion is the many balconies that are supported by the Corinthian columns. Mr. Woodward probably chose this hilltop location because it provided an unobstructed panoramic view of the city. The demonstration of opulence was not just left on the outside. The inside was just as complimentary as you can see here in what is referred to as the Gold Room. According to Jean French, the current president of the Women's Club of San Antonio, Mr. and Mrs. Woodward went on a trip to the 1904 St. Louis World Fair and while they were having the house built, uh, they decided to go to the exposition uh, in St. Louis. It was a St. Louis World's Fair. So uh, at least these, this is what I'm imagining. And I'm imagining them holding hands and walking through, seeing all these exhibits and such. And they decided they would go to the theater. Okay, so this was in uh, 1904. They went to the theater. And while they were at the theater, she saw this beautiful furniture and was so impressed with it and she on the way home you know told her husband like all wives do oh wow that furniture was fabulous uh, you know I'd sure love to have that well being the romantic and he had to have been a wonderful husband because unbeknownst to her as a surprise he went to the French government because the French government actually owned the furniture he picked out the furniture that she'd chosen and asked them if, if he could um, if he could buy it and if they would please crate it up and deliver it to San Antonio, Texas. Wow. Can you imagine your new home? You, you come home and the next day the doorbell rings and you start getting crates and you start opening them up and you see, oh honey, it's the furniture. 
How did you remember? It's so beautiful. I love it. I mean, I, I can't even imagine I'd be so excited, and I'm sure she was, and I'm sure she couldn't wait to tell all of her friends. Oh. And so that's how we got the gold room. So it went from the parlor to the gold room. Mm -hmm. She was born May Bach and San Marcos in San Marcos, Texas. I know that uh, this is a little known fact. She actually was an artist and she delved in oil and painted China. She was an avid reader. She loved to read. And according to the stories, if she went to the beach or she went anywhere where she was comfortable, she would have a book in her hand. It would be my pleasure to tell you about our co-founder, Eleanor Brackenridge. She was born in 1837 in Indiana. I know she was a learned woman. She graduated from Anderson Female Seminary. She was a bold and courageous leader. She was involved in many things, education, law, medicine, the arts. Her family were philanthropists here in San Antonio. Um, they had several businesses and they did an awful lot for San Antonio. And one of the things after their passing, the brother and the sister got together. There was a large plot of land that they weren't certain what to do with, that that land has become Brackenridge Park. Well, I know they were friends and I know that they worked together. But in the summer of 1898, they went to Denver, Colorado. Uh, and I do know that uh, Marion was a social editor and, uh, for a newspaper, and that newspaper became the Express News. So they went together to Denver because they wanted to find out what steps they had to take to make their club become successful. She had this great desire to come together with like-minded people. So she came back here to San Antonio and presented everything that she learned. So I think it must have took because we've been around 116 years. The club would use the house to organize and fight for what is good. In fact, the Women's Club of San Antonio was the first in the state of Texas to endorse and fully campaign for women's suffrage. I can only imagine what it must have been like with all those 18 ladies around that table, talking to one another, laughing, having fun. Miss Eleanor and members were involved in a 20 year battle to help get women's right to vote passed. They would host events to raise funds and have lunchtime parties to rally each other, write letters to congressmen and create picket protest signs and they got results. Women in San Antonio gained the equal right to vote in June 28, 1919. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Women's Club is the only club that has three official fiesta events. The first one is our flower show. And then the next important thing that we have is our course team coronation. My name is Maddie Mo Hageman and I was a Fiesta Teen Queen in 2013. The Women's Club of San Antonio is a nonprofit organization full of tons of inspiring women who are just so generous who want to go out and help the community by giving money to charities, to scholarships, and fundraising. And I'm just so honored to be a part of an organization that has played such a big role in San Antonio's history. I just aspire to be like these women. And last but not least is our Fiesta Hat Luncheon. And the Fiesta Hat Luncheon, that is our biggest fundraiser. The Women's Club helped establish Fiesta in several ways. Uh, the most important one, you know, David Woodward himself was the first Carnival King. And he was named King Salamat. Do you have any idea what King Salamat stands for? Well, actually it's tamale spelled backwards. And he actually started the real Fiesta Carnival. Wasn't that a refreshingly beautiful story? In a time when we're living in a fast paced, me centered world, comes the story of the Woodward home. A storied home that reminds us that when we value truth, hard work, 
and honorable values and being loving to our neighbors, we can achieve great things in togetherness for the benefit of our community, just like the Woodward and the Brackenridge family did in the past. And like the distinguished women of the Women's Club of San Antonio, who still carry out their original purpose, stated in this 1904 membership yearbook. It says, the mutual improvement and cooperation in all that pertains to the greater good of humanity. So the ladies welcome you to come and tour the storied mansion and learn why it's a special part of San Antonio's heritage and why I'm pleased to have featured it on my storied home. I love this club. I'm Betty Lewandowski. My name is Muriel England and I'm a longtime member and love this club that does so many wonderful charities. Thank you. Belinda Peña Bosques, membership chairman. Jean French, current president. Harriet Ellerby, I'm editor of the newsletter for the Women's Club. Hello, I'm Sandra Bradley and I'm a club member. Hello, my name is Michelle Mode Hegman and I am the current recording secretary. Hello, I'm Elizabeth Neely and I am an educator in San Antonio. Thank you. Hello, my name is Daisy Fox. I'm a member of the Women's Club and a local milliner. Hello, my name is Martha Aguirre and I am the house supervisor for seven years. Hi, I'm Kathy Littlefield. I'm a past president. I'm a historian, and I also have with decorations, and I'm a gopher. Thank you. <laughs>